Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This isn't the day you're supposed to go into the house of prayer of the Muslims, the mosque. This is the day that you give praise to Jesus Christ. We're to pray without ceasing. Five times a day, it's just not going to cut it. Old Allah told you to pray 50 times a day, Muslims, but Jesus said to pray without ceasing. What do you think, Brother Osama? Absolutely, especially if you, if, especially if you pray in a language, you know what you're saying. Yeah, that's it, important. It, you know, 87% of the Muslims around the world, brother, they are praying and they have no clue what they're saying. It's amazing how, uh, how Muslims around the world will say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rahman, Rahim. And I say, what does that mean? We have no idea. Yeah, he, just, he just memorized it. And it's they were sad. just saying, yes, indeed. It's sad. Welcome to Jesus, O Muhammad, dear Muslim friends. Uh, we are not here to demean you or to belittle you, but to wake you up. Amen. So that you would, in, with God's help, listen to the gospel presentation that you will find in this program. But uh, we also, as we exalt Jesus Christ tonight and every night here on the Jesus or Muhammad Marathon, and we pray every night in every program here at ABN, exalting Jesus Christ, glorifying Him, sharing the gospel that He entrusted to His apostles and now to us, His uh, brethren in the faith, Amen. also exposing Islam. So very important, Brother Osama, uh, today in a time where there is a clash of cultures, a clash of civilizations, if you will, mm -hmm. and uh, in the West there is uh, unfortunately abysmal ignorance among Christians and non-Christians uh, concerning the true nature of Islam. And that brings us to our title tonight, Slavery in Islam. Yes, and sir. Brother Osama, I'm going to give it to you in just a moment, but I, I, I want to remind our viewers that, uh, you know, in America, even in our public schools, we're, we're weaned almost on the fact that uh, black Americans have been taken advantage of, which they were, mm -hmm. black Africans, and brought to this country and used as slaves, mm -hmm. uh, both in the North and the South, but mm -hmm. then later on just in the South. And, uh, and this was a thing that, that we should be ashamed of. Yes, indeed. Uh, but, uh, but even though we talk about this, I really... Look forward for the next program we're going to have together when we talk about history of slavery yes. and how much is the percentage of those who came from Africa to from the West to come to to go to Europe or to come to the United States. We're talking about five percent. As the whole world talk about the five percent, but they forgot to mention the ninety-five percent those went? who left Africa from the east side to the Middle East to the Muslim world. Now, and that's so we're, the we're going to get into today. this obviously uh, later. How many Americans you, do you think, Osama, know, even have a clue? That, that Muslims did have an extensive slave trade that lasted for the 1,400 years of Islamic existence. Uh, sadly, brother, I've been doing this seminar. This is a brand new seminar in our ministry. Yeah. I've been doing it now for almost the last three months. And sadly, everywhere I go, people, they shake their head and they scratch their head. I never thought, I never know anything about this truth. It, it is, it is uh, one of the topics which I, be, I believe uh, the Muslim in America use it very well yeah. because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and yes. they, they use, the, they, they have advantage over the American because Americans do not know neither anything from the Christian side about slavery, which we're going to be covering today, or on uh, what's happening in the Muslim world in the Middle East for the last 1,400 years. We're going to be covering this, obviously, in the next session. And they hide, of course, behind the Arabic a lot. But mm -hmm. uh, let me just mention two things, and then we're going to go directly to Brother Osama and his presentation. Uh, actually, three things. First of all, let me remind you that we are in a fundraiser. And, uh, you know, we need your support. We're looking forward to prayerfully launching a brand new channel, not just a show, but a channel in 2011, highlighting the threat of Islamic Jihad in particular, the Islamic threat to the West as manifest in violent Jihad, terrorism, and pointing out how this has deep roots in the religion of Islam making the people in the West aware, not just America and Canada, but also with God's help, Europe, Australia, some parts of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, English-speaking audience worldwide needs to know about this, and of course this will be ultimately a vehicle for a greater audience to Muslims and others of sharing the true answer, the only answer, the final answer to Islamic Jihad, which is the greater spirit, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, the Holy Spirit of God, the gospel of Christ through his church, we must rise up. That's number one. Number two, uh, as you mentioned, the importance of this issue of exposing slavery in Islam is, uh, is not just to point out how Islam is, is not of God and, and not a religion of love, and, but importantly in this context, North America, on this satellite, number one uh, uh, demographic of Muslims in America, black 
American convert. And it's, it's because of the ignorance about the topic of slavery in the Bible, which we're going to be covering tonight. Not only have they not told the black American converts about Islamic slavery, but they have turned in the white uh, Christianity into the white man's religion and the slave trader's religion. Absolutely. And we're going to debunk that today. Absolutely. And then finally, the last thing, to, we're going to have tonight's show. Again, we're going to be back at 11 p.m. Eastern for, this, for a continuation of this topic. Mm -hmm. And it will all culminate tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. with uh, Pastor Imri Moss, who's in the Detroit metro area, who is a, a black American, who will bring, I pray, an added element to the show of his experiences Absolutely. A, a, as an older uh, black gentleman in America and Christian pastor who has seen, especially in the Detroit area, because, you know, the Nation of Islam, you know where it started? Yes. Detroit. In, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and so he's going to bring that in. So without further ado, Brother Osama, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Listen intently, dear viewers, and, and really, you need to be taking notes here. We will allow for callers later on in the show, but I do pray that as you call, we're only going to take callers on the topic because Brother Osama has a lot to share, and it's time for me to shut up and allow the <laughs> Lord to use him to bless you right now. Well, Go right ahead. Thanks, Brother Joseph. Yes, sir. Uh, God bless you. Slavery in Islam, as we will see here on the screen together. Uh, uh, I see the picture we put there, uh, black and white. Uh, the words Islam is in yellow. Slavery, and I see the wire. It is a true thing about black and slavery. But uh, before we get into Islam and slavery in Islam, we have to cover the topic slavery in the Bible. And the question we need to ask here, does the Bible promote slavery? Uh, it's a very good question, and uh, we have to answer it. Okay. And uh, this will be the topic for tonight. Okay. Uh, Muslim, in, Muslim in, in, in America and uh, Muslim uh, in the West uh, uh, try hard to twist the facts and truths, what is uh, written in the scripture, to tell us that the Bible teach slavery. And uh, as we're going to see even the video of the President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, which I believe 100% he is a Muslim man, he will try to convince America and convince the world that the Bible Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, uh, specifically teach and allow slavery. Uh, this is a question. Does the Bible promote slavery? Uh, I would like to read for you a verse in the Bible, and when we read this verse, we will come to the conclusion. Does the Bible allow slavery or promote slavery? And then we're going to talk about it in more depth. Listen carefully what the Word of God said in Exodus, Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. Well, uh, somehow we have some problem with the sound in the computer. And he button. that stealeth a man and go. selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. What do we see here, Brother Joseph? Mm, yeah. Somebody steals somebody, or somebody tries to sell somebody. Hmm. What is the punishment? The Bible is clear, as we see in the red word here, but to death. Yes. I mean, I can ask the question one more time. Here is a quiz for those who read or saw the verse on the screen. Yeah. According to the Bible, what is the punishment for taking someone against their will and sell them to a slave, as a slave. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me make it easy. I, I'll choose one of the following two answers. Yeah. Number one, A, all expense paid to Hawaii. Is this a true answer? I don't think that's, now that under Obama's, uh, you know, <laughs> he, they say he was born there, maybe, but no. no. Uh, I don't think that's right. Well, the other answer is death. 